Hi there students. In this video I'm going to remind you how to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. This may be a review but make sure you watch because I find that students often forget a couple details when they haven't done this in a while. Okay let's start with adding or really what you're doing when you're adding is you're combining like terms. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight things that are similar and then we'll combine. So you have an x and an x over here, you have a constant and a constant over here, and this poor little x squared is on its own. So when you add polynomials, all you have to do is take these like terms that I've highlighted and combine them. You can only combine them if they are the same. You cannot combine x squared with an x. That's like saying I have three apples and two oranges, so I have five apples. That makes no sense, right? Okay, so x and negative 2x, well, you have negative $2, but then I give you one, basically. Um, so you only are down $1 now, okay? Or you have negative 1x. You have 3 and positive 1, that gives you 4. And you're adding x squared with nothing, so you just have x squared. Now, typically with polynomials, we like to order from the highest degree to the smallest degree. So I'm just going to rewrite this as x squared minus x plus 4, that would be standard form. Great. Number two is very similar, except we are subtracting these expressions. So I have my like terms are identical to what I had above, um, but now we want to subtract. The reason I like talking about subtraction is because this is one of the most missed silly mistakes in Algebra 2, because I know you all know how to combine terms, but when the subtraction sign comes into play, you need to remember that you're subtracting everything. So really, you need to distribute the subtraction sign. So instead of doing x plus negative 2x, you really have x minus negative 2x. If you don't like that, what you can do is distribute and then go ahead and combine like terms, just like addition. And that's what I'm going to do. So really, what you have is x plus 3, and you're adding negative x squared Negative times a negative gives you positive 2x, and negative uh, plus 1 would give you negative 1. And now you're just adding, and you don't really need those parentheses anymore. So we have x and 2x, that would give us 3x. 3 and negative 1, 3 minus 1, gives you plus 2, and you have minus x squared. I'm going to write this in standard form. You can do this all in one step if you prefer, um, but I would like you to write it as negative x squared plus 3x plus 2. And there's your final answer. Okay, so addition, you don't really need the parentheses, but subtraction, you do. Because you're subtracting everything in the middle, not just the x squared. Keep that in mind. Okay, multiplication. So you may have learned what's called FOIL or double distribute. And both of those are how you would multiply something like this. However, I'm going to call this double distribute because it tells you what you're doing. What you're doing when you double distribute is you distribute each value multiple times. So instead of just like x times x minus 2, where you distribute the x one time, double distribute means you have to distribute the x and you distribute the 3. It's the same thing as FOIL, but FOIL tells you first, outer, inner, last. It just gives you the order. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the x to both terms. So x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 2 gives me negative 2x. And now I've distributed that x. Okay, since it's double distribute, we have to distribute the 3 as well. So I have 3 times x gives me 3x. And 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. Now all you have to do is combine like terms, like we did in number 1, and you're good to go. x squared is all by itself. Combine these, you have 1x and a minus 6. If you are a very visual person, I'm going to give you a way to set this up visually. It may help you with longer polynomials, and it could help you with factoring later as well. Um, so this is called the box method or the area method. And basically what you're doing is you're just labeling the sides of each of these squares a uh, different part of the two binomials. So here's one binomial. I'm just going to put it on top. doesn't matter where you put it. Here's the other binomial. I'll put it on the side. And basically it's called the area method because what you do is you find the area of each box. So to find the area, it's base times height, length times width. So x times x gives you x squared. This would be the length of 3. This would be x. So 3 times x gives you 3x. Again, length of x. And this one has a height of negative 2. So it's negative 2x. And last one has a length of 3, a height of negative 2. So that's negative 6. And then all you'd have to do is combine like terms. So it's the exact same thing I did over here. It's just really organized and visual if you set it up as a box and think of it as finding area. Um, and I'll show you where that may come in handy later.
I'm not going to do all of this problem here, but I just want to remind you what x plus 3 quantity squared means. A lot of time I will see students write this. x plus 3 squared is x squared plus 3 squared. Right? Right? Wrong! Okay, the reason why that is wrong is because you cannot distribute exponents when there is a plus sign in between. If you expand that, you'll understand why. So what x plus 3 quantity squared means is that you're multiplying x plus 3 two times. Exponents mean repeated multiplication. So you have x plus 3 times x plus 3. And this problem is certainly not equal to x squared plus 9. If you distribute it out, it'll prove that. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the steps, but I just wanted to point that out. Whenever you see a binomial with an exponent, always, always expand before you multiply. Okay, then it shows you what you need to do. Instead of just trying to think you can distribute, memorize that rule. That's an incorrect rule. Do not do it. Write this in big, bold letters on your notes. Okay, number five is very similar, um, but if you expand it, you're going to have to multiply x plus 3, not two times this time, but this exponent tells you to repeat the multiplication three times. I'm not going to go through all the work of this either, um, but I am going to give you some advice that you can think about and ponder in class when you're working. All you need to think about is multiplying x plus 3 times x plus 3, which we know how to do. Once you do x plus 3 times x plus 3, you've multiplied it two times. And you'll get some polynomial, which I happen to know is x squared plus 6x plus 9. That's what this is equal to here. Once you get that, then I would multiply it by one more x plus 3. Really, multiplying a bunch of parentheses together, you can just break down into a series of let me double distribute and then let me do it again. Which brings me to something like this, where you have a trinomial or four terms or something more than two terms. This is why I don't like to call FOIL FOIL. I use double distribute instead. Because once you look at something like this and you think FOIL, you're like, wait a minute. I'm so confused. First, outer, inner, last. Ah, what do I do? Well, instead of calling it FOIL, if you call it double distribute, all it means is I'm going to distribute x to all three terms. And I'm going to distribute 3 to all three terms. And that term is a lot less misleading than saying, I'm going to FOIL this out. This is also why I like to introduce the box method, because I find the most mistakes here come from a lack of organization. And the box method can organize this problem very nicely. So if you do want to do the box method, all you would have to do is set up your terms. But this time, you'd have three terms on one side. And the other side, you would have two. And you can find the area of each box the exact same way. Nice, easy way to organize it. I'm not going to go through all the computation of this because I have confidence that you are able to do this on your own. Uh, but if you do have questions, please come to class with them and we will be able to practice more. Have a good night.